now is senior markets correspondent Kevin Green with some levels on his mind in the S&P 500. Uh, good afternoon to UKG. What are we watching here into the close about 22 minutes from now? Yeah, I mean, the market has been pretty much uh, very slow uh, for the entire day here, but we continue to melt up, looking at an area of resistance right now of around 60, 50. Uh, earlier this morning, we kind of highlighted 60, 60 was also on the radar for those that were actually selling calls early on. That could be an area where we do melt uh, up to if we're able to kind of break through this current wall that we're at with 60, 50, which is a considerable amount of size when you're looking at the amount of volume as well as open interest there, uh, and not a lot of catalyst going into the close here, but we have been able to once again kind of manage uh, for now. Now, the mega cap names have been uh, the strong leaders for today, while market breadth itself has actually been fairly weak. And Alex, what I will say too is the uh, lack of volume is actually very remarkable. It's not uncommon for us to come uh, you know, back from a holiday, especially a holiday like Thanksgiving and Black Friday and all that stuff, to see very light volume. But today's volume right now is actually going into the close is actually lower than what we saw on Friday, where we had, for the most part, a half day. So not a lot that's actually really uh, moving these markets. Even the, 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 the Fed commentary has been a little bit light. So uh, a continued melt up. This is kind of what the holiday season kind of known for, especially when you look at the end of the year type of rallies, where there's not a lot of volume to really support prices, but prices can still advance. And I think that's kind of the environment that we are seeing right now. Uh, barring that, we do have some economic data on the calendar this week to to just also be mindful of when you're looking at the VIX at the level that it is at right now. Uh, this is kind of a relatively cheap uh, portion of the curve, especially on the front end of the curve for volatility. If you are a little bit concerned about the data points coming out, uh, like ISM services or ADP or even the, the non-farm payroll uh, number on Friday, uh, once again, um, IV and, and, and hedging is, is actually relatively cheap right now. KG, I hadn't noticed just how quiet it was until I, you flagged this for me, but you know, I could kind of tell just by how little my screen was flashing uh, in the S&P is that it wasn't a busy day. But for context for the viewers, one thing that I do, and I know you have uh, that, that chart up there, but one thing I look at just for a quick back of the envelope, doesn't take much time to get an idea of how, how much action's in a day. I just look at uh, ES volume, so S&P 500 E-minis volume. The average for one month is around 1.4 million contracts a day. We're just over 750,000 here, including the Sunday open as well. I mean, not only is this quiet, I mean, this is about as quiet as it gets in this particular marketplace. So kind of tying this into how you're watching these levels and you look at these big kind of gamma points and dealer positioning points, is it more or, or I guess, uh, in your mind, likely then that you could see a pin to one of these levels in a thinner, quieter market just because it doesn't take much to push this thing around? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I would say, once again, that 60-50 level, uh, it's been on the radar for the last couple of days. And, and right now, it seems like we're kind of gyrating uh, around it. And I would not be surprised if we close uh, relatively close to that level here. And then tomorrow, once again, we'll have another repositioning to the upside. Now, uh, you are right. When you're looking at the E-mini S&P volume, it's, it's going to be very light. You will probably start seeing a little bit more of a pickup in the next week or so. As we get close to the quarterly expiration, you will see a little bit of a runoff there, maybe some rolling activity going in from the December is going into the, the March contracts for next year. So that'll be a synthetic uh, backing for volume uh, for, for the most part here. But yeah, you're right. And, and once again, this is an environment where it, 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 all of the ingredients for continued melt up or continued move to the upside are there. Uh, other side of the coin is, is that everybody's on the on one side of the boat, right? There, it doesn't really take much to shake the market, too. So if we do have a, a pretty decent or big news event uh, that's bearish, you could also push prices very violently to the downside. We just don't have that environment right now, but it's something that we should be uh, mindful of because the first two weeks of uh, December are generally uh, choppy markets uh, for the most part, just like we're seeing right now. Uh, and then the latter half, the last two weeks of the year is really where we get that nice, price advance that Santa Claus rally that leads into the 1st of January. I'm going to chalk this up as a little turkey hangover, maybe some sluggishness <laughs> on a Monday. I would be shocked if volumes didn't pick up as this week rolls on with uh, some earnings and all the jobs data, Jerome Powell speaking uh, as the week rolls on. But if it stays as quiet as it is now on Friday morning, expect some action perhaps around that jobs data in a, in a thin market but we'll see uh like i said i don't anticipate that kevin green appreciate it